Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we scour YouTube for 10 of the best poker vlogger hands that we can find for your enjoyment. This week we have it all. Roller coasters of emotions, bonus points if you can guess the opponent's hands, and brave, brave tournament bets. Let's make a start. At number 10 this week, Mariano is at the Hustler in California playing a 10-20 cash game. And I don't know, is anyone else finding a call in this spot? In this next one, the straddle is on, there's a few limpers, and then I make it 300 with Ace-10 suited from the small blind. The cutoff and button both call, and we go to a flop of Ace-2-3 all hearts. Having top pair on a sketchy board and being out of position versus two players, I decided to check it, and now the cutoff bets $440. The button decides to then move all in for $2,600 into a $900 pot. Action is back to me, and facing a bet plus an all in, I'm not really in love with a mediocre top pair here, especially with a $13,000 stack left to act behind me. However, things get interesting now because the cutoff folds out of turn before I have a chance to act. So his hand is now dead, and all I've got left to worry about is the all-in from the button. Okay, so what does he have? Hands that I could beat are the random bluffs with the king of hearts, and smaller aces, I guess. But I think that's unlikely, seeing as I'm holding one, and he probably wouldn't play that in this fashion. Now, hands that I lose to include flushes, straights, two pair, bigger aces, if he limped in with those. So quite a few things. And once again, it's a tough decision. He's right. He, he's right about that. That this changes the calculus so much because he doesn't have to worry. And remember, Sonny was the initial better. In the end, I think a fold here makes the most sense. I just don't beat too many hands, and even if he is bluffing with the King of Hearts, we're not in amazing shape. On top of that, he jammed all in after a player bet, which looks even stronger to me. So, I end up folding the best hand, which is annoying, but I think the logic is sound, even if the results don't reflect it this time. At 9, close to brokers at the Commerce in California, playing 5-10. And there's nothing else to say for this one, but hold tight. Early position decides to limp here. I'm in the cutoff and I decide to look down at pocket queens and isolate to $50. The gentleman to my direct left, who has been pretty active to say the least, is uh, going to go ahead and make it $175. The big blind who's definitely done this already in this session, he's four bet us in a spot where this very action player three bet me. And he does it once again for $410. The action gets back over to me. I'm sitting on about $1,500 effective. And uh, I don't feel like I have much of a decision. If I'm not going to be jamming this hand as a 5-bet, I'm just kind of letting this guy run over me, I feel like. He's obviously a good-thinking player. And when he's 4-betting, he's not always going to have the nuts. He's going to have things that are far from it. So I decide to jam my $1,510. To no surprise, our action friend here from the button decides to pretty quickly stick it in. And the big blind tanks for a little bit of time before inevitably saying that he has probably the worst hand and makes the call. We're going three ways all in pre flop for a whopping $4,500 all in pot pre flop massive monster pot. And the flop comes 4 3 3. The turn ends all of our worries as it comes a queen. And the river comes an inconsequential seven of clubs. I show my pocket queens immediately. The gentleman to my left, our action friend, decides to show ace 10 of clubs, so he backed doored a flush. Luckily for us, we did have the boat, and we take down an unbelievably ridiculously sized pot. Definitely the biggest pot I think I've played at the Commerce 510 game. At 8, Todd Swardensky is at the Bellagio playing 510. Goodness me, is this a roller coaster of emotions? Finally, I look down at ace-jack offsuit in the hijack and make a pretty standard open to 30, and the button calls. The flop is jack-5-3 with a couple spades, and this is a texture I like to use a larger sizing on when I do decide to bet, so I bet about half pot for 40, and our opponent makes the call. 
The turn is beautiful. It's the ace of clubs. We turn two pair, and we're unblocking both the nut flush draw and the other flush draw possibilities containing the jack of spades. So I decide to charge those types of hands with an overbet for 200, and our opponent calls almost in instantaneously. He didn't quite beat me into the pot, but he didn't think any longer than about two or three seconds before tossing and calling chips. The river is the 10 of diamonds, so king-queen does get there, but honestly, we should only be losing to king-queen of spades at this point, so I'm not super concerned about that holding. The spade draw does miss, and when an obvious draw misses like this, I've learned that plenty of players bluff catch much lighter than they normally would. Figuring this out has saved me a lot of money by not following through on missed flush draws, and it's also made me a lot of money by betting larger than I normally would to exploit the hero calls. Because I'm unblocking spades, the flush draw missed, and his turn snap call of my overbet, I think this is a perfect spot to continue betting pretty big. If he has nothing more than a missed spade draw, he'll likely fold to any bet size anyways, but he could still have a missed nut flush draw with a pair, or maybe two pair. So I go ahead and bet basically the size of the pot for 550. He thinks it over for quite a while, and I go from hoping he doesn't snap call to hoping he doesn't put in a raise to hoping he finds his cape to make the call to going back to hoping he doesn't raise again. And after a full minute of tanking, he tosses in a calling chip and we show him the bad news. He sighs, shakes his head, tosses his hand in the muck, and starts to display all the classic signs of a tilting problem. So let's hope we can capitalize on this guy's frustration. At seven, our boy Ethan, Rampage Poker is playing in the 2550 game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And this hand just goes from bad to worse. This next hand gets pretty big and interesting, so strap in. I pick up Ace Deuce of Hearts in the hijack. There is a low jack open to $250. Here with the suited ace in position, I make the call, and the button on my left also calls as well. We're going to a flop three ways, which comes Jack, Seven, Deuce, Two Hearts. Pair and the Nut Flush Draw get a lot going for us. The low jack, C bets, $500. Obviously not going anywhere and actually contemplated on making the raise. I will say raising here in this game seems a little scary considering how much I have to raise and, you know, pretty much just drawing for hearts. So in position of this bet, I think I can go either way, but I decided on just make the call and the button folds. So going heads up to a turn, which is the four of diamonds. For a second time, he fires out again and amps up the aggression to 1400. Look, not folding. Maybe I'd fold worse flush draws here, but definitely not the nut flush draw and a pair. Can always hit a deuce or ace to suck out and win as well as outs. So for 1400 bucks, I stick it in the middle, also playing with plenty behind. So if we hit a heart, we could definitely get paid in a big way. Let's go to a river, which is the 10 of clubs. Nope. And even worse, this player blasts away $3,800 in the middle. Can I ever bluff catch with bottom pair? I don't think so. Can't do much with just one pair and the worst one at that. So I just sheepishly let my cards go. And we see an extra needle. This player shows seven deuce for flopped two pair. Oh my god. I owe him an extra $200 now on top of him winning a pretty big pot against us. He takes down a $1,000 bounty and somehow finds value to value bet seven deuce. What a sick flop for him. At six, it's Mariano again. We're back at the Hustler, this time in a 5-5 game. And why isn't anything just easy? I get dealt queen 10 offsuit in the straddle. Late position opens to 60. Button and big blind call and I call as well. The flop comes queen 10-6, all diamonds. I check, the preflop raiser bets $75, button and big blind both fold, and now it's back on me. I feel like calling makes the most sense here, but I decide to raise it up to 300, mostly because it's a meetup game, I expect to get called lightly, and I've had a few drinks. What I did not expect, however, was another raise, which is exactly what my opponent does, all the way up to $850. We each started the hand with around 2500 so still plenty of money left to play for, and I'm not here to make tight folds. So I make the call, and we got a big pot building here. The turn changes nothing, the five of clubs. 
I check it over, and this time he announces all in for his remaining 1500 or so. Well, not much of a decision now. If he's got me beat, so be it. I make the call, and we see the seven of spades on the river. I'm not expecting to win this hand super often, but my opponent says, you got it, I missed. So I happily turn it over, and we end up taking down a pretty sizable pot to top off the night. At five, close to broke is at the commerce playing in a 5-10 game. And there's nothing else to say, everyone. Bink, bank, bonk. Anyways, middle position raises to $60. The big blind decides to make the call. We look down at 6-4 offsuit. It's a horrible hand. The good thing is it doesn't interact with the small blind's calling range or what I believe the middle position's raising range to be. So, you know, whatever. We're going to go ahead and be defending this. We got to defend when we put out that $20, right? Anyways, I decide to make the call. We're going off to a flop that comes pretty reasonable as it comes 10 8 5 Rainbow. We flop ourselves a gut shot, and when the action checks through, luckily, we turn an open ender as it comes at three. There is a full rainbow out there, and at this point, with all the people checking around, it's about time somebody puts money into the middle. So I bet $75. Middle position goes into the think tank for a little bit before deciding to just make the call. The big blind decides to make the fold, and we're going off to a river, hoping to improve in some fashion, make a little bit of a luck. For us drop a like in three two one to see if we can catch one of our outs and the river comes a deuce of diamonds bink bank bonk oh my gosh this is a massive massive turn of events i was betting as a bluff as a semi bluff and now i'm able to bomb this river with a massive sizing as now we have the goods i decide to massively overbet here for 375 dollars I don't know exactly what my opponent has, but I'm definitely not targeting, I think, a hand like 8-7, really. I think more than likely I'm targeting a hand like Ace-10, Jack-10, some kind of weird hand that checked back the flop. And I think, honestly, he can even be checking back aces or kings on that flop texture and just making his hand into a check call. So if that's the case, I want to go massive here. And uh, I bet $375, and to my, honestly, to my complete surprise, my opponent almost instantly decides to make the call for that massive sizing. And we're able to take in a massive pot to get our session off on a fast, fast start. At four this week, Doug McCusker's at the Capitol in Sacramento, Northern California, playing in a 1-3 cash game. Bonus points if we can guess the opponent's hand. So the game's slowing down a little bit. A couple of the big stacks have left, and I'm fighting with a bunch of small stacks. There was a bunch of limpers, so I raised 220 with my two queens from the hijack. And the first limper puts in the call, second limper puts in the call, and when it gets to the third limper, he, of course, puts in the call. So we're going to go four ways to this flop with $84 in the pot. The flop, well, it's a good one. It comes out. Queen, five, five. So, yeah, we flopped the nuts, basically, unless someone has pocket fives. First player checks, next player checks, player next to me checks, and of course, I'm just going to check this one back. It seems like a bet at this point would be a little bit too much. Hoping someone will catch up. Turn card comes as a deuce of diamonds. It doesn't look like anyone's going to catch up, but to my surprise, the first player ends up betting out $35. Now, this player has been betting whenever they had a very strong hand. So I'm really excited because I get to put in the call and hope he blasts off on the river, which comes in eight of spades. He bets out again really quickly for $35. Now, I don't know whether he thinks he's milking me for $35. I decided to give him a chance to get all my chips, so I jam it. He thinks for a while. Thinks for a while. Not quite sure what to do. What could I possibly have? I have no idea. Finally, he decides on announcing that he calls, which was music to my ears because I'm pretty sure I have the best hand at this point. I roll it over, he mucks his hand, and uh, quickly leaves the game. And the top three this week, at number three, Poker Face Ash is playing in a $600 tournament at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And she is deep in this tournament. So I don't know what you think, but this looks like a brave five bet to me. 
here. I look down at queen jack offsuit in early position. Blinds are 100 and 200 with no ante. I have about 29,000 to start the hand. I raise to 500. The aggressive guy to my left, who I said was three betting me, goes for it again and puts in the three bet and makes it 1500. Folds to the big blind and he decides to put in the cold four bet and he makes it 4,600 to go. I sensed that this was a little bit of a dynamic and exploitative play, knowing that the dynamics between me and the player to my left were happening, and I thought he was maybe trying to take advantage a little bit of this. Queen Jack offsuit isn't the best hand to turn into a bluff at this point, especially against a cold four bet, but I wanted to go with my gut and my instinct, and I knew if I put in the min five bet here, it would look super strong and it would force the opponent on my left to have to fold a lot of hands knowing that now he has the four better in the big blind to worry about so it really puts him in a tough spot. Hands you normally want to use in these types of spots are hands like ace deuce offsuit, ace three offsuit, wheel hands that block aces or a suited king type hand that blocks kings. You always want to try and block premium hands. We do block ace queen, ace jack suited if he happens to turn those hands into bluffs and we do block queens and jacks. Not the best excuse in the world to do this but it was really one of those exploitative plays. So I decide to put in my first ever five bet bluff in a a tournament and I click it back and make it 9,700. The guy to my left hangs for a while so I assume he actually had a pretty decent hand this time but I was happy to see him fold. So then it's over to the big blind and he does not think very long before putting in the fold so I got it through and my instincts were right. The big blind seemed like he was four betting pretty light there which I expected him to be capable of and we took down a nice pot and now almost back to even at this pretty aggressive table. At Two, it is Jack, one of the trio of Next Gen Boys. He's playing at the Texas Card House in Dallas in a 1-3 game. And what in the world is happening in this hand? As I mentioned before, the seven deuce bounty game is in act and we're playing 1-3, 10-20 this hand. Yes, you heard that right. There's a double straddle on. We're in an early position and look down at seven deuce. Let's bump this one up, try to get some folds. I make it $80. Everyone folds all the way around to the double straddle who's Pez. His hand is going to be kept a mystery and he defends for 60 more. Flop comes 10 high, it's rainbow, and when he checks me, I see bet 75, but he makes a call pretty quickly. The turn brings in an offsuit ace, and I think this is a great card to continue betting. I'm going to have plenty of hands like ace king, ace queen, ace jack that see bet small on the flop and can go for some value now that I hit top pair. So. I'm going to try to pretend like that's exactly what happened. I bet 125, trying to look value heavy. And Pez thinks about it for a while and rips it all in for $375 total. I snap fold and let's see what he had. 7-3 offsuit. Wow. Okay. We just got owned on television. Nice hand, Pez. Props to you for having the balls to make that play. I respect the hell out of it. And at number one, we're back with Rampage playing in that massive 2550 game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And no disrespect, Ethan, but is this brave or stupid? In the next situation, I pick up Ace Eight of Clubs in plus two and start off with the action by raising to 300. Folds around and get the under the unstraddler to defend his straddle, so we're off to a flop of 977 Rainbow. Not a single club on board, and this player checks to me here. I've been doing a lot of checking in this session, and this one is like no other. I check this one back with ace high and some backdoor straight draw possibilities. When the turn comes, the five of diamonds, one of those opportunities does come luckily. This player bets out $400, and here I have ace high, which is good showdown once again. Also, having an eight gives me some equity to hit a gutter. I decide to make the call with a gut shot straight draw and over card. I'm not going anywhere. We're off to a river which comes the queen of spades. And on this card, we whiff everything once again. But our opponent bets out pretty large this time to $1,300. Hmm. Something about how this hand played out just feels a little fishy. It's hard to imagine that this player is going to have a super strong hand besides a random queen x holding or 7x. And the bad part about me bluff catching here and calling down with ace high is that I actually contain an 8. And I think a lot of his bluffs are going to hold an 8 in hand as it blocks some combinations of 8-7 and 8-6. Also, 10-8 would have been open-ended on the flop as well. But I guess I could also beat random cards like jack 10 or hands that hold two diamonds and didn't connect with the queen anyways i'm a non-believer as you know folding is boring 1300 let's do it i toss in a chip for a call and this player shows 10 8 luckily 
got the right read and win with ace high in this one. Maybe I'm just a little too stubborn and sticky and he made a really good bluff, but regardless, it's nice to get chips pushed my way and have the hero call of ace high work out in my favor. So brave or stupid? If you ask me, Ethan, it's just excellent poker. So there we have it, 10 of the best from week 11, March 2022. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, links to each of the original content videos are in the description box below. Until next week, good luck at the felt.